everyone, I'm Lenise Willis, Editor-in-Chief of Gifts and Decorative Accessories, and welcome back to our new video series, Meet the Makers. Today, we have a very special guest, Holly Daniels Christensen, who is the founder and CEO of Dune Jewelry. Holly, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I love you guys. We just discovered you guys a few years ago, maybe a couple years ago, and then all of a sudden it was, where have you been all our lives? <laughs> Really, like it's been such a great relationship. Oh my gosh. Well, we have loved getting to know you guys. Um, on a personal note, I straight up ordered um, some of your earrings for one of my friends um, for Christmas because she got married in Scotland and I wanted to bring some um, little piece of Scotland to her. But with that said, for those that aren't familiar with Dune, you love it. Hold on. You just left me on a cliffhanger. <laughs> She loved them. I did okay. <laughs> earrings of sand from Scotland and she was floored and sent me like a thousand text messages of like, you're the best gift giver. You're the best gift giver. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> I love that. I'm so glad. Good. Yeah. She was so thankful. So, but I know I kind of jumped ahead and jumped the gun because I was so excited to talk to you today. Um, for those that are not familiar with Dune Jewelry and probably have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> tell us a little bit about Dune Jewelry first, and then we'll get into its journey. Sure. So we are the one and only experiential jewelry company uh, in the world. Um, we we capture experiences in every single piece of jewelry that leaves our studio. And what that means is we use sand and earth elements from like memorable and iconic locations all over the world. And we inlay it grain by grain into the jewelry so that now you've got this tangible reminder of a special moment or a special place or even a special person. Um, we started just using sand because I was like, oh, I love making beach sand jewelry. And I was doing it at my kitchen table and it was great. But once I launched as a business, people would, I realized that, yes, I had an affinity for the beach and those are where my memories were. But other people were like, oh, can I take a pinch of sand from my favorite golf course, like the golf bunker? Mm -hmm. um, or can I send you ashes um, from my pet or from a human. Um, and I was like, yeah, yeah, why not? Like everyone's experiences and everyone's memories are different. Um, flower petals from weddings, um, mm -hmm. sand from your honeymoon. Uh, we'll get into that later. I mean, we've had crazy <laughs> stuff sent to us um, for jewelry. And I mean that in the best way possible. Yeah, I absolutely love this. And I was, I was so excited when we found you guys, because, you know, we talk a lot about you know, independent gift stores are looking for gifts that are unique and customers want things that feel personal and personalized, especially more now than ever before. You know, consumers are trying to set themselves apart from like ordering another thing from Amazon that every single person oh, has. <laughs> and, and also sort of, um, you know, commemorating um, memories or a person or a travel destination. So I just absolutely love the idea behind this entire company. So why don't you tell us, how did you get the idea for this company? It's been such an evolution. In the beginning, I was working with my childhood best friend. We've been best friends since we were five years old. And she was making these little ornaments. She's a wonderful artist. She was making these ornaments out of sand from the beaches of Cape Cod, where we grew up. And she was really doing the artistic portion of it. I was helping her kind of go out and sell it at different arts and craft shows. At that time, I worked in real estate. Uh, I had a real estate career that I really enjoyed. Um, but then as I saw this opportunity to let my creative side out, I've always been artistic, you know, and always creative, but I never had an outlet for it because I was always kind of taking jobs that were to pay the bills as opposed to like foster my creative side. We started talking and thinking like, what's the next step? You would see these people looking at the ornaments and having this aha moment of like, oh my gosh, I could, could I make it from this place or that place or this moment? Um, and of course we always said yes, but just that reaction was really special, the sentimental reaction. And so we took classes, a couple of classes at Metalworks in Waltham, Massachusetts, um, and learned how to inlay prop, inlay particulate matter, I guess. That, that's not a very pretty word, but <laughs> if we're going to be technical, it's particulate matter um, into different metals. 
And then I took it and kind of ran with it in the sense that it, I, I like, I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I love to do. This is what I was meant to do. And I really honed the craft. And then um, ultimately she decided to continue with her uh, professional journey. I decided to launch Dune Jewelry. Mm -hmm. And then, and she also has three boys that were in school. And um, so she was able to kind of be home with them, but then now they're off to college. And now she's the proprietor of our first ever boutique store, brick and mortar store on Cape Cod. Oh my gosh, that's so yes. exciting. Like full circle. Yeah. <laughs> full circle. Well, I know um, you were officially founded in 2010, but it's been quite the journey since then. I mean, you started as, you know, what you call a one woman show and have, have grown quite a bit. So tell me about um, how you guys have grown over the years and where are you now? We are in such, like, I, you probably feel my energy today. I'm like, ah. The vibrations are so high um, because we have so many, you know, if I can kind of separate what's going on in the world right now, it's easy for me to just be really excited about the future um, when it comes to work, right? Because um, the, the world is, is a little chaotic um, at the moment. But if I focus on work, it's exciting because, you know, we've grown from this one woman show, and just me at my kitchen table. You know, I joked with my husband at one point, I'm like, people are only buying this because I was like, 10 months pregnant, hauling <laughs> tables around, sweating, you know, going to Cape Cod arts and craft shows and, and selling the jewelry. And um, luckily that wasn't the case. People actually liked it. They didn't feel sorry for me. <laughs> but now we're in a 3,100 square foot studio in Hyde Park, Massachusetts. Um, and we have approximately, you know, give or take one or two, just with fluctuation, we have about 30 team members. Um, in the studio, making jewelry, packaging jewelry, quality control, polishing, you know, the whole, the whole process from start to finish. Um, you know, the, the, it's probably good for me to show you just oh, a yeah, like, visual. Um, so when we get an order in, we actually customize it. So here's a, a wave necklace and a, a full heart necklace. The wave is made with sand from children's beach in Nantucket. Mm -hmm. And the heart actually has crushed turquoise on the top with shells, uh, crushed shells from the big Island in Hawaii on the bottom. So, you know, you could, so that's someone's memory, right? But someone could order same exact design and silhouette, but they might want sand from Positano, Italy in here. Maybe they don't want the turquoise. They want this just totally filled with red rose petals because that's their per favorite person's favorite flower. So yeah. it's all completely personalized and customizable. And not only can you send in your own elements for the jewelry, you can choose from our sand bank, which has over 5,000 different elements from all over the world. Wow. From anywhere from Ketchikan, Alaska to Dubai to 250 unique beaches on Cape Cod. Um, it's wild. <laughs> That's amazing. And it's so beautiful. Um, you know, our, our course, uh, of course, our readers are retailers. And I so often think of your company as like a consumer company, just because I'm a consumer and I love it. And I was like ordering things from your site. <laughs> yeah. Um, and choosing sand. But when we talk about um, retailers, how does a retailer, um, you know, start their journey of selling your jewelry and what possibilities exist for them? The, the sky's the limit. We <laughs> take care of our retailers. I, I would be, not that I want to take on that challenge, but I would be shocked if any of our retail partners over the years, and we we ship to about six or 700 doors um, consistently. Uh, and that's the bread and butter of our business, actually. We're 75% um, B2B yeah. and 25% direct to consumer. Um, and the reason I love our retailers is because you get a chance to work with people who, once they get it, and it sometimes it takes a little while, once they get it, they get it. So for example, one of our number one retail partners is a, a little boutique um, in, on Sanibel Island called Suncatcher's Dream. Mm -hmm. He does extraordinary business. And he happened to just get it right from the beginning. He went in deep from the beginning and, and it's grown to this huge business for him. Um, but he takes a little pinch of sand from Sanibel, a little pinch of sand from Captiva, and then he'll go and like 
you know, he'll look and say, oh, I want to put some teal limpet shells in there or, oh, this one's good. This is um, conch shell. Little oh, pink. Yeah. So awesome. That looks really pretty. Um, I'll show you one. I just happen to have, because this is my workspace here. I happen to have um, a few shells, but this is uh, wampum. This is quahog shell from Cape Cod. So anyway, Dan from Suncatchers, um, he just orders, he orders big and he has had tremendous success with it. I think the reason not only does he have great salespeople and he's wonderful, but also he understands the concept. He tells the story. He lets, he has enough of an array of the jewelry so that it clicks in people's minds that it really is customizable. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're open to working with new, uh, retail partners all the time. And we're constantly trying to kind of support them and come up with ways, you know, cause our, honestly, our product isn't a super high margin product because there's so much hand labor and human labor. Um, but we really do our best to kind of make it fair, come up with fun little incentives throughout the year, whether it's like buy this amount and get free product. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we always do free shipping at the shows when people come and see us. Um, so we, we want to take care of our retail partners. Like I think while, while some jewelry companies are like running this way away from small boutiques, we were like running toward the small boutiques. And I think they appreciate that. I hope they do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I just love, you know, we talk so much about, um, the importance and really the trend of having like city pride and state pride and local pride, um, you know, like products that have a map of your city, you know, like those have been so popular and how cool is it that a store could have jewelry with like local sand or elements, you know, something that's like from that area. Yeah, so I totally like, I forgot. Cause of course I, I immediately, just cause that was my first experience in business. I go to this, the sand thing, but that's not like, we do um, amazing business with a place called uh, Bach towers in Florida, where they've got this crushed marble um, from some of the, their buildings that, that we crush up and, and oh put in. God. Um, we've used Kona coffee in Hawaii, um, Sedona, Arizona, that red clay dirt is like, oh, it's beautiful. It's like, you, you're almost, you're almost like blown away that mother nature makes all these, there's nothing added to it. She, mother nature makes all these different colors and textures and it really, it's cool. So it's not just about, you know. Oh, we've done um, grape leaves from wineries. That's going to be more ideas than even I have thought about. So the possibilities really are endless. <laughs> they really are. I have another one here that is really, um, really, really pretty. This has sand from the Amalfi Coast. Oh, um, that's gorgeous. I love that color. Yeah. So the bottom is Amalfi Coast. The top is actually crushed malachite, mm -hmm. um, which that I is think gorgeous. is pretty. We call that our gradient technique where we drizzle some color into the sand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So what advice would you give to retailers that want to carry your jewelry in their store as far as the display or telling the story? Like, are there ways that they can sort of, you know, promote its specialness in their store? It's a good question. <laughs> call me. <laughs> um, I think in the beginning, if I'm going to be totally transparent. I think that it's overwhelming for people that don't know who we are. Mm -hmm. um, and they kind of either wander into a booth or wander onto the website. And they're like, what, what's, you know, they're, they see all the excitement and we're writing orders with customers, but they don't get it because there's not, there really is no other business out there that is at the level of customization that we're at there. I mean, maybe there is, I just don't know about them. Um, so I would say, you know, contact us, tell us what's super special about your region that you have your store in. Yeah. Um, even if it's a, a leaf or a sports team, or it can be anything. And then, oh, we have sand from Fenway Park infield. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I had one of the Patriots, New England Patriots coaches drop off turf from Gillette stadium. He did like 35 keychains for his guys one year with the turf from Gillette. Um, so it doesn't have, you know, the sky's the limit and 
you're really, the beginning's a little painful because you've got to wrap your head around. And I know what it's like to be busy. So you've got to sit, wrap your head around all the designs, around all the price points and around all the elements. But we have a really good sales team that will help you narrow it down. And if they don't have the time, I'll help. Mm -hmm. Um, And once you really just take a moment to get it sorted out in your brain and set up, then it's just reorders, you know? Mm -hmm. And then your customers tell you, like, they'll be like, oh, wow, they you, you have, uh, and I'm at a loss. There's so many. I'm like thinking of, of some of the stuff that people do. Um, but they'll say, oh, you have this so-and-so beach. Well, can you do um, hydrangea petals? Because that's really popular on Nantucket. Or like customers will start talking. And it's such a great conversation piece. And the other thing that's huge is if the store owner or manager is prevalent in, in the community or in the store, like being able to tell your customers, oh, you know, John went down to the beach and got collected these shells and then Dune processed them and put them in. It becomes uh-huh. all that more pers- personal. I yeah. Would- oh my gosh. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Uh, well, Holly, thank you so much for chatting with all of us today. Um, and I know, I love that you also mentioned, um, you know, even including someone's ashes in our um, April issue coming up, GDA has a whole story on in memoriam gifts. Um, oh, and I know it's kind of the sadder side in a way of the gift yeah. industry, but it's still very relevant um, and something that needs to be chatted about. So this works for that too. Um, and like we said, travel is picking back up now that people, I mean, it's been like a two year vacation hiatus because of COVID with people starting to travel more. I know everyone's ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're in a travel destination spot, (laughs) I'm doing jewelry. (laughs) Oh, I forgot to mention too, that, um, we're, we're, we're in the middle of our giving month right now where we donate back to charities, but we're, um, just surpassed, we just surpassed $200,000 in donations over the past five years to multiple charities around the world. Um, a lot of it is, is specifically ocean conservation, um, and, uh, and, and, uh, nature conservancy, but we also, um, work with like op- opioid awareness, uh, mm-hmm. diabetes research, things that are kind of near and dear to me and my team. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we really, our charity initiative is growing. Oh, that's amazing to hear. That's awesome. And another story aspect to pull in, um, you know, for customers as they're telling your story. So that's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. Well, Holly, thank you so much for chatting with us today. And thank you guys for joining us. We always um, love that you guys are our readers and our followers. And please keep up with us. And uh, we can't wait to see you next time. 